Hi, I'm Alex from Southern Ukulele Store, and here we are back again in our new shop on Ringwood Road, Bournemouth. And today we're going to take a look at 10 tenor ukuleles. And sometimes you're probably wondering, well, you know, why has he chosen these ukuleles? Well, the truth is, today, uh, before I went home last night, actually, Romeo and I sat down and we said, what 10 ukuleles have we been asked about this week? And then we made a list. And then we went, okay, well, that's the 10 that will feature this week. Sometimes it's as simple as that. We're trying to kind of tick as many boxes as possible in one go. So we've got a really wide assortment of tenor ukuleles, starting from around that kind of all solid wood price point. Let's, what have we got here? What have we got here? Starting at, yeah, you're looking at kind of a starting price point today of about 450, 500 pounds, and then going right up to the, uh, to the super high end. So all solid wood ukuleles of good quality to excellent quality to world-class quality. Got it? Cool, me too, let's begin. First up today, we're gonna to take a look at the Ohana TK43. I was really excited about this ukulele when it launched. I actually thought this was gonna become the, the kind of biggest new ukulele around that 500 pound price point. Um, I thought, you know, the Flight Fireball has been enduringly popular for a couple of years, but I thought this might tickle some new people's fancies. Is that something I can say? Yeah, I, get, I can say that, can't I? Um, but the scarcity of the woods has made this ukulele a little bit on the rare side. It's made it a, a difficult ute to obtain. As a result, we've only really had it in stock twice out of the last 18 months. This ukulele has a burled redwood top. So an American wood, a similar wood to cedar. Burled redwood is stunning to look at. The figuring in this, it almost reminds me of English oak. There's waves to it. There's obviously burl. Um, burled elements to the wood these tiny little circles in the wood but wow what a lovely piece of wood you're not going to see anything else really like that in the video today and it's probably the most affordable uke in the video today so the scarcity of the wood really does come into play that burled redwood gives you that cedar finger style warm but clear and crisp sound lots of attack especially when you pair it with Indian rosewood back inside. So the rosewood on this is really, really black, lovely straight grain, that classic instrument grade Indian rosewood that we think of. You have maple front and back binding with some lovely um, herringbone style tr uh, trim. You have the rosette to match with a mahogany neck, a 36 mil nut width with a, an Indian rosewood fingerboard and bridge. And then you've got a lovely head plate here with the Ohana logo. And the open gear gold tuners. It's a stunner. It's a great sounding ukulele. I'm gonna try and demonstrate it for you now and see what you think. Moving away from that Ohana now, and if you're looking for something with just a slightly more refined build, this is the Miller SP260W. I think it's a bit of a crime, Miller, using codes like a company like Carla do or companies that produce en masse, because this instrument is made by a very small team in Taiwan. Um, it's a family affair, quite literally. You have four members of the same family building instruments. If you imagine you've got grandma doing the finishing, <laughs> it's really that kind of situation there with Miller. And the instruments they produce feel more intimate. They feel more personal as a result, that like you can play two or three SP260s, for example. And you might find that one 
feels a bit more smooth than another. The next one might sound a bit louder, like they are a bit more unique and personal. So feel free to contact us and ask us for our, our, our opinions on what you're getting with these. This one we have right now has a solid spruce top with acacia back and sides. Lovely acacia used there at Miller. Always something quite holographic when you look at it here. Rope binding, so you have mixes of maple and Indian rosewood going all the way around the instrument. Indian rosewood fingerboard and bridge with a slotted headstock. Lovely UK of a slotted headstock. I love the aged looked tuners on Millers that have the um, Ivoroid style plastic button and the slotted headstocks on Millers they curve off lovely so the neck is a it's an, it's 35 mil nut width but with a really lovely volute in the neck a really natural shape to it uh, the string spacing is about 28 mil at the nut so it's not it's not on the, the thinner side despite having the more slender nut width you have a mahogany neck and and just in case I forgot to mention it, you have a lovely piece of maple for front binding and going up the fingerboard, you have the maple binding. So you can see the dots very clearly in a dark room. It's a very, very clear, clean sounding ukulele, a great instrument. I had the concert version of this for a couple of years. Always had a soft spot for Miller concerts and sopranos, but their tenors rock too. So let's give this a play and see what you think. Next up today we have the lovely Aka EQ by El Luthia. El Luthia have become very well known in a very short time for producing guitars and now ukuleles with this offset sound port, slightly wider, bigger bodies, producing a chunkier, thicker sounding ukulele. But they listened to the feedback. There were some people out there that just said, I want something more conventional. And in their own way, they have produced this model, which feels like a super tenor. It has the width of a super tenor, very similar to the Canalea uh, super tenor or the Carla XL ukuleles. It has a cutaway, which is a really lovely sheer, very modern looking cutaway going all the way down. It retains the curve in the actual waist of the instrument really nicely. You have a side sound port, and the wood on this particular model is solid spruce with acacia back and side. So the same as the Miller we've just looked at. So it'll be interesting to see which one of those you prefer. You have an ebony fingerboard and bridge, and in case you hadn't noticed already, you've got these lovely bird inlays on the top. You have a mahogany neck, which is a satin finish against the gloss of the body, with the Eoluthia faceplate, and those aged tuners, similar to the Miller we just looked at before. The nut whips on the Eoluthias are wider than a Miller, so it's much more like an Anui Nui, you're looking at around 37 mil with a nice wide string spacing. But the profile of the neck is ultra modern, so the neck depth is quite shallow, uh, giving you the maximum amount of room. In fact, I would argue that a 37 mil nut whip with a shallow neck is going to give the average hand more room. A chunky neck like uh, an Enya E6 with a bigger profile, slight radius, and then the 38mm width, nut width. This is a lovely instrument and it responds well to the feedback people gave about El Luthia when they launched their ukulele range about a year and a half or two years ago. It's gorgeous. Let's give it a play and see what you think.
Next up today, we have the Carla Trembese Tenor, the TRGBT. This is part of a Metropolitan series that Carla launched Oh, probably about 18 months ago now. And yes, this instrument does look very similar to a Pono, but the body shape is notably, noticeably different. You have a much tighter waist on this instrument. I find that the Trembesi wood itself, which is a very, very interesting hardwood um, part of the monkey puzzle family, tends to be, it tends to be quite projecting. So it's similar to Mango, but a little bit more attack, if that makes sense. You have front binding, back binding. It's a gloss finish with a satin neck. It's a 35 mil nut width with the Carla uh, Metropolitan um, new headstock, not something you see on other Carlas at this point, with open gear Grover tuners with black buttons. Now, I'm, I have a theory, you know, this instrument here has been around, it's been in stock probably for about eight or nine months now. I think this series has been discontinued from Carla, certainly in the UK. Our UK distributor has no more plans to, uh, to bring these in. Um, I don't know how they've been for Carla, but I've actually always been quite disappointed they weren't more of a noteworthy release when they came out. Very few people know about this Metropolitan series, but they feel completely unique to other Carlas out there. Interesting, isn't it, how some things just fly under the radar. But if you want a different tone wood, Trembesi is not something you're going to see on anything else on the wall. Um, actually, we have a very special price on this particular instrument. So it's a similar price to a Flight Fireball, but it should be, I think, £250, £300 more than that. So, yeah, really... If you want a one-off, this is a very cool instrument to go for. That's the salesman, salesman of me talking, but... But you know, for the same price as a Flight Fireball, you're getting something very, very different here. And I always measure things up against the Flight Fireball because of its enduring popularity. And uh, I'm always surprised that the right person hasn't come in, tried this yet, and gone, wow, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So let's give it a play and see what you think. Next up today is a ukulele that I'm hoping proves my theory that the ukuleles with the worst names make the best noise. This is the Rebel Double Cheese Tenor. This ukulele has a solid spruce top with solid mahogany back and sides, a slightly chunkier depth than the average ukulele, a high gloss finish, very bare bones with an ebony fingerboard and bridge. Going up to the Rebel faceplate, with the Goto planetary tuners and an amber button. They have a neck profile that's identical to a Koaloha, so they have a 37 mil nut width with a recessed string spacing. So the string spacing is actually slightly in on the fingerboard. So it's a wide nut, but a narrower string spacing, a very unique instrument in that respect, along with a couple others. They come with the coolest bag in the music industry. It's just the most 1993 bag I've ever seen. I kind of expecting it to uh, do a duet with DJ Jazzy Jeff at any point. And the Rebel range itself, they have several food-based instruments that are very, very well known by now. You've got the creme brulee and double creme, which are the mango ukuleles. One's a slim body, one's a, th uh, a thicker body. And then you have the cheesecake and the double cheese. So the cheesecake is the thinner version of this. It's a much snappier sounding ukulele. The double cheese is much warmer. It's a bigger sounding instrument. And although the cosmetics of the Rebel basic line are very, very simple and understated, the actual sound this ukulele produces, this is a very good recording ukulele clean and clear and confident and very very well put together these are made in thailand in very small numbers and it's always exciting when we can get them back in stock let's give the double cheese a play and see what you think Thank you. 
Next up today, we're going to take a look at one of my favourite ukuleles of all time. This is the Big Island Pony T. Pony is purple in Hawaiian, and you're probably thinking, what, 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 what huh, why? <laughs> and that's because when you turn this instrument around, it has a gorgeous, subtle purple finish to it, purple stain over uh, mango. It's actually Hawaiian mango on these ukuleles. A really lovely piece of wood on each one. They all look unique. The pony came about because of the success of the uli. The uli I'll probably have on the wall here. Yes, the uli has a green back and sides. That's because about three years ago, I decided I wanted a green ukulele and in my infinite wisdom i said well yeah let's get a run of them made by big island i love big island and we did and they were really really popular now i will confess i've been a bit sad at how um how few people have been as as excited about the pony it's definitely been less successful than the uli um there's just less people out there looking for purple musical instruments in 2023 i guess but you know we try these things and sometimes they work out sometimes they don't i don't see myself putting another order in for the pony variation of this ukulele um, because the uli is the one that people always get more excited about but i love the purple one I think it's one of the most beautiful instruments we've ever had made. Much more subtle than the Uli as well. From a distance, you would think it was a brown back and sides, but I like that under a bright light, it shines purple really clearly. You have a 35 mil nut width and you have an Indian rosewood fingerboard and bridge. It's a slot bridge, which is a rare treat for a ukulele. The easiest bridge to restring. You have the Big Island uh, turtle headstock shape with the Big Island inlay, closed gear tuners with the snake wood buttons. And if you're wondering why we made it, why did we just get something purple made? Well, actually, I always associate purple with royalty. You think of Hawaii, Hawaii you look at the history of the ukulele and King Alexander's popularity. I always thought, you know, purple robe, hobby royalty regal i just thought it would make a nice tie-in but actually the tone wood combination is the key really cedar and mango whoa wow what a great sound you have the warmth and the complexity of the mango but the cedar makes it really really project across the room one of my favorite ukuleles that i've ever owned was my uli t performing kind of restaurants two or three times a week with it for a couple of years i just think they are a workhorse instrument for half the price of a hawaiian equivalent let's give the pony tea a play and see what you think Sticking with Big Island now, which I can do because it's my video and I make the rules. This is the Big Island KTTR. This is the standard Hawaiian koa tenor that they produce. And the one that we have right now is one of the sexiest looking ukuleles at any price in the shop. Really lovely straight grained koa. Gorgeous all over. Really lovely ukulele. High gloss finish with an Indian rose with fingerboard and bridge. You've got the Big Island turtle shape to the headstock once again with that inlay. And you have the closed gear tuners with the snakewood buttons. The quality of the Big Island ukuleles, they're a Vietnamese made ukulele. And price wise, you know, they're a notch below what you would get for a standard Hawaiian ukulele. But what you get is 90% the real deal if that makes sense so playing a big island ukulele to me feels like playing an imua it feels like playing a kawaii it feels like playing a Ramiro creations the things that are gatekeepers to the hawaiian made or us made sort of premium instruments that people get very very excited about 
I, as a professional player, I've always found Big Island to be one of my go-to uh, choices. Um, not everyone gets on with them. They have a 35mm nut width and mo a lot of modern players think they want a 38mm nut width if they're buying without trying them first, which is totally fair enough. But I've always had a soft spot for this brand and this particular model is the model that made the world go round for over a decade. It's interesting actually, comparing something like the Big Island KTTR to the new Kanalea Oha series, which is what we're gonna do, spoiler, because these ukuleles are really the standard bearer for which something like the Oha needs to uh, need to beat. Um, let's give the KTTR, I went completely blank there, but it's a great ukulele. Let's give the KTTR a play and see what you think. Having looked at the Big Island now, let's compare it like so many do to the new Kanalea Oha series. This is the KO2T. This is the deluxe model. Deluxe because of the cosmetic upgrades. This ukulele is based on a KPAT. So it has an abalone rosette, it's a faux abalone rosette. And it has front and back tortoiseshell binding. So it's Hawaiian koa. The wood is selected by Canalea in Hawaii. It's then sent to this small team in China for assembly. They have based this instrument off of a Canalea KPAT. So this ukulele has the same bracing as a Canalea. It's true R bracing. It has all of the modern features of Canalea's, except instead of ebony, you have an Indian rosewood fingerboard and bridge. Instead of ebony bridge pins, you have plastic bridge pins. And then instead of the UV gloss finish, you have a more traditional polyester gloss finish or polyurethane gloss finish, which is in itself not dissimilar to anything else in this video. It's just the UV gloss finish is a very expensive process and that's part of the reason that the Hawaiian May kind layers are as expensive as they are. The KO2T has a gloss finish on the body with a satin neck a nice wide 38 mil nut width with a 30 mil string spacing. It's got the Canalea logo on the headstock with the open gear tuners. They're just bloody great. If you want to buy a Hawaiian Koa ukulele, you've got several options under a thousand pounds, but very few of them are gonna give you that slice of what a K brand ukulele will in the same way that this will. Let's give the KO2 T a play and see what you think. About eight years ago now, Anui Nui introduced the Moonbird, also known as the UT200, a ukulele that used moon spruce on the top, so Swiss moon spruce and Indian rose were back and sides, with ultra modern stylings to produce the first true high end equivalent to the K brand ukuleles or a luthier built instrument. They were designed by a, a fascinating luthier, very eccentric Japanese luthier, famous for many 
many quirky, cool, high-end ukuleles of his own. And the Moonbird completely took off after several years of it being a bit of an underground hit here at Southern Ukulele Store, World of Ukes. We noticed that Hawaii Music Supply and several American dealers started to really get on board with a Nui Nui. It was always popular in the Far East where it's manufactured. But there came a point where you had to ask what can beat the Moonbird and the answer was the only thing that a Nui Nui could do to beat the Moonbird was the Moonbird itself. So this is the Cedar Bird. This is the UT214. This has a western red cedar top in place of the spruce. It retains the Indian rosewood back and sides. Has a gloss finish with some lovely styling, a sported maple rosette, which you can definitely see influence in the new Flight 4 String Boy model against these instruments. You have some slight tapering in just to give the body a unique shape. Very subtle how they've done that. You have a cutaway, you have a satin neck going up to the Inui Nui paddle headstock and black Goto planetary tuners. These come in a hard case and it's just so difficult to beat the immediate visual impact of the Bird Series ukuleles, but also just how they sound. I don't know if anything really has been this popular. We made the UT200, the Moonbird, our ukulele of the year when it launched, I think around 2000, and, I think two years after it launched, around 2019. Four years later, it's still one of the most popular ukuleles in the shop. And the Cedar Bird is the only thing from a Nui Nui to come along and really supersede that or replace it as a must have item that we're chasing stock of all year round. Let's give the UT214 a play and see what you think. Our last ukulele of the day is a personal favourite of mine. This is the Koaloha KTM 00MG. Koaloha first did batches of mango ukuleles around 2015, 2016. They rejigged their entire website to say, you know, the new standard would be koa or mango, koa or mango. And then for whatever reason, they were unable to get stock of mango for several years. So for about three years, they were conditioning customers to expect and get excited about mango. And then just supply chain issues made it very difficult for them to make batches of mango ukuleles. When they finally did, they produced some of the best ukuleles ever. We're three or four years on from that now, and they still make one or two batches of mango ukuleles a year. The KTM 00 MG is a is a gloss spec, so that's that the standard ukulele, a modern ukulele by Koaloa standards. It has a high gloss finish to the body, a slightly more stripped back gloss finish to the neck. The neck is CNC shaped, so it's machine shaped to make it as kind of contoured and easy to use as possible. You have that very distinctive Musubi rice bowl sound hole. You have the five point crown headstock with the Koaloa logo. It's just instantly recognizable from a distance and then modern Koaloas have their own Koaloa branded gunmetal gray uh, geared machine heads. You have a tusk nut and saddle, which is 37 mil with a recessed um, string spacing of about 27 mil, so slightly reduced into the fingerboard. And the frets themselves are clipped before the end of the fingerboard, making it a very unique feeling ukulele in your hands. The KTM 00MG differs from the Koa models in the Koa ukuleles that Koaloa produce have always been quite untamed, boisterous. They're loud, they are unapologetic. It's very hard to play delicate, delicate, sweet pieces on a Koaloa because it just wants to jump off the page. The mango version has more natural bass. It allows you to be a bit more reserved in your playing if you want to be, but you can still make these extremely untamed if you want as well. They're loud, they're vibrant. I always have to turn down the volume slightly on the recording equipment 
development before I start playing a piece on them. They're just great. They come out of the factory with their own brand strings now, which are a variation of Worth strings. I think that's unofficial, but you know, they're a Japanese made fluorocarbon. And for many years before that, uh, Koaloa had an association with Worth. So if you're looking for like for like replacements and you can't get the Koaloa branded strings, then you you can always use Worth instead. They have a factory low G. Don't be put off by that if you're looking for a high G ukulele. I had a Koaloa Mango Tenor for several years and I always loved playing it with a high G. Really snappy, cl clear and bright sound, but with enough bass that you can finger pick and really make a tapestry of different sounds. Let's give the KTM OMG a play and see what you think. <laughs> 